We're about to have our last demo. If everyone could please take your seats. That's you, Adam. Well, thank you, everyone. Apparently, I'm the closer tonight, so hopefully I don't disappoint. Uh, my name is Vivek Sharma. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a New York-based company called Movable Inc. And uh, I used to be a former engineer, so uh, I like to A-B test things. So I've got a secret, you know, we've done a lot of research and I'd like to share some of my tips. And one of those is a, an experiment with facial hair. And I can tell you unequivocally, uh, handlebar mustaches don't help you sell more effective hair. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the member, and uh, they're one of our clients, and we support our clients in a really big way. So uh, it's a great cause. Uh, pick out a mustache, it's still not too late to start, if you can grow one. Depends what you're selling, Harley Davidson. Exactly. If you're selling in Brooklyn, I think you might have a good shot. <laughs> uh, so while I go through this, I know I don't, I don't want this to be too much of a sales pitch type of thing. Uh, I'd like to share some insights that we learned as we were building the business. And so we, we're about three years old today. And <clears throat> about two years ago, our revenue was about $200 a month. And we were um, selling. We had lots of small businesses that were coming on board and using Movable Inc. But uh, not a lot were sticking around and actually paying for the service. So the <laughs> biggest decision we actually made was to switch over and start selling to enterprises. And it was a far more sophisticated buyer. They actually had budgets, and um, we could have, <laughs> which is a good thing to have. And we could actually spend some time and make sure they were successful on the platform, which is a really big deal. A um, couple other interesting things. We, I think up to today, very rarely showed a demo of the product in order to close a deal. So it's uh, sort of a difference when you're selling to enterprises where the value proposition is a much bigger thing <laughs> to lead with before you get into showing features and product and things like that. Uh, how many of you, if you've got businesses, uh, apply some sort of email marketing to, to, to build an audience, to acquire people, to retain some of you? These are the successful businesses in the room. Uh, if you're not using email, you have to. It's one of the most effective channels you could possibly look at. Um, don't trust me. Uh, the DMA's got studies that sort of dollar for dollar, it's the highest ROI of any marketing channel that you could sort of invest in. So if you do use email, email marketing's changed a lot in the last few years. And what you might be familiar with traditionally is sort of this batch and blast. Large campaigns get sent out. It's the same for everyone. Then we got a little more sophisticated. We started to segment audiences into different buckets. Uh, women get one message. If you're in New York, you get a different message. And uh, it's, it's more personalized, it's more relevant, and things are evolving. The next step was infusing some dynamic content. So the perfect example, uh, when this works right, is high first name. Uh, when it works wrong, <laughs> it's, it looks pretty uh, pitiful, and it's actually pretty disastrous. And the thing that everyone's talking about today is predictive analytics. Uh, looking at big data, what's someone likely to do? What is their buying behavior like? What kind of products are they looking at on my website? And are they in market for what I'm selling? So we think this is all great. Uh, this evolution is a really good thing for the industry. But we have, we're trying to move this industry forward. And what we call it is agile marketing. And as good as predictive marketing is, it can only go so far. <laughs> the agile marketing is actually actuality-based marketing. It's emails that know when you are, <coughs> where you are, what device you're opening something on, and even what the weather's like outside. And so I want to show you a couple of examples of things we've done for our clients. This email campaign from Hollister, and she's got a, a countdown clock embedded within. And yes, that one's ticking down too. Uh, it creates a sense of urgency. One of the big things for them was a time-based promotion and creating a sense of urgency around this particular offer. And it worked incredibly effectively for them. And once that offer runs out, you've missed it. And so sometimes you, you swap over to another offer, or sometimes you just kind of create this, uh, this urgency and, hey, I missed out on this deal that I could have, um, could have participated in. Now, it's marketing that knows where you are. This campaign from American Eagle actually detects where you are the moment the email is opened and shows you a nearby store location. So it's about driving uh, clicks to bricks, or rather, uh, marketing, digital marketing traffic 
over to a physical bricks and mortar store to get you to transact there. So really powerful stuff that is possible today that was unimaginable just a few years ago. It's marketing that knows your device. So uh, a research uh, study that we did recently shows about 60% of email openers are doing this on mobile devices, uh, iPhones, iPads, Android phones. And you've got to treat these, treat these, uh, this type of audience differently when they're opening your email. So uh, the mobile first approach, while that could be effective for that audience, kind of suffers from taking the same approach for everyone who's opening your email campaigns. So what's actually possible today is to automatically detect the type of email, uh, the type of device someone's using to open your email, and um, simplify that messaging if they happen to open it on a mobile phone, and even have different calls to actions. Things like uh, someone can actually uh, auto-detect and launch your mobile app if they happen to be using that. And the Comedy Central example is a, a, a great example of this. It's marketing you share with your friends. So not only does this email in incorporate video, uh, it's got a call to action to get you to tweet the second you uh, to, to kind of share this with your friends. And so when you do that, it will detect whether you have the Twitter client installed, automatically launch that and pre-populate a tweet. And Comedy Central saw an incredible effect from social sharing driven from an email marketing campaign. So email and social don't necessarily have to fight. They can actually complement each other really nicely. And finally, it's marketing that you can measure. Uh, my, our colleague over here, uh, I think Steve, was talking about uh, metrics in real time. Things you could actually do that, you know, the CMO is never going to log into your dashboard. You could send them a live analytics email that's showing up to the second information about how your campaigns are performing, what's effective, what's not. Should there be alerts to certain types of activity that are happening on site or uh, within the email? So agile marketers are faster. They're spending less time building these email, email campaigns. So this long idea of a campaign cycle that's taking you two months, uh, that's a thing of the past. And so you should be thinking about how can I come up with lots of different ideas, experiment very frequently, test these out, measure them, and adapt my program on the fly. It's about making your, your customers smarter and the content smarter. Content that is adaptive to when you are, where your clients are, what device they're opening on, so on and so forth. And on the flip side, actually making marketers far smarter in gaining insights and being able to act on them in real time. And finally, far more measurable. Uh, what your CMO cares about is the effectiveness of that program. And uh, it's really important to get into deeper insights all the way through to conversion for campaigns that are agile like this. Some of the brands that we've uh, been working with, uh, we, we've got about over 100 uh, Fortune 1000 brands using our platform today. And they span verticals, you know, things like retail, um, travel, financial services, and it runs the gamut. Really, any company that is using email marketing can benefit from a more agile approach to their, to their program. And why it's important is, you know, it, it's, it's down to the, to the dollars. It is incredibly effective. Uh, increases in click-through rates, increases in cross-channel sales, uh, driving mobile app downloads, increase in revenue. Uh, using the, the right application of tools like this, uh, agility can not only make you faster, it can make uh, drive more to the top line of your business. So I know uh, you guys actually care more about seeing the demo, so I'm actually going to jump right into that. So this is a small piece of the Agile email interface, and there's actually three different audiences it, it addresses. And one of the things we realized when we were pitching early on was... Um, there's different needs for these different audiences. If CMO simply cares about the results of these campaigns and don't want to get bogged into the details, the director of marketing has a lot of latitude about the types of campaigns they want to run, what is going to be incorporated, what kind of promotion, should social media be a part of that. And finally, the, uh, the core campaign manager is uh, burdened, and they've got 40 campaigns a week to get out the door, and more stuff to throw on them is just going to be a thing that detracts from them using the tool. So trying to address all of these things uh, can be a challenge. When you get started out, there's a, there's a number of ways you can import your email campaigns into the system. And just to be clear, we're not an email service provider. Actually, some of our best partners are the large ESPs like Exact Target, Experian, Cheetah Mail, um, eDialog, Epsilon. 
And so we don't send emails. What we do is dynamically power those emails with super relevant content. There's a few ways we can get that content into the system. And one of those might be just to copy and paste the HTML into the interface. Uh, you, could, you could also forward that email and we can ingest it and parse it and categorize it. And finally, <coughs> we asked ourselves, why are we even writing, having the client write HTML? So this is a way to start a campaign by ingesting a, an image or a Photoshop file. So in this example, I'm an email marketer for a travel company trying to promote a Las Vegas vacation. And what I've uploaded is the asset that my designer has created. And he created a beautiful layout, looks perfect, but a lot of the hard work is actually converting this into HTML. And so one of the tools we've built allows you to simply slice up this email into different pieces. And so anyone who's used Photoshop, any designer, uh, even the CEO of a marketing company can use this fairly easily and start to uh, convert this email into something that is ready to be deployed. So I've added a few <coughs> horizontal and vertical slices inside this email and go to the next step and the conversion process actually starts at this point. This is something that our clients spend an incredible amount of time doing. Uh, we've got, uh, <laughs> we, we know this through the pain of building emails ourselves. It can take you half a day to a full day to build a single email campaign. And we have clients sending 40, 50 emails a week. So it's incredibly labor intensive. Uh, and in fact, I just flew back from London last week and there was a large retailer that's got exactly that problem. And they offshore this and they've got a, a workflow built around having people build these uh, HTML uh, campaigns manually. And this is a huge time savings for them. So any piece of this email, uh, I can actually convert into a block of live content, or it could be a static image, or I can uh, insert uh, header, pre-header text, or footer text into that message. And now that that conversion process is done, I can go ahead and export that template and begin to work, uh, begin to work with it and actually inject live content to make it even more relevant than it was before. So the campaign manager who's doing this day in and day out, uh, this becomes a huge time savings and when they might have only experimented with uh, three or four emails a week, now they've got the freedom to test out lots of different ideas. So it's not your best idea that ever sees the light of day, you have a chance to experiment far more frequently and settle those bets at the office about, hey, does social actually add any value to our email campaigns? Uh, what kind of A-B test should we be running? What kind of holiday promotion should we do for, uh, for Thanksgiving or Cyber Monday? So what you're seeing here is this HTML that's been generated. And it's, uh, it's painful to look at, and it's even more painful to code up. So we've completely automated that process. And if you were to use this just to <coughs> automatically generate HTML, that's a huge value in and of itself. So we've done that, we've got that entire email inside the canvas, ready and editable. And it's a very intuitive interface that lets you manipulate the content directly. And one of the first things I see is I've got these blocks of content, and this is my Las Vegas promotion, and it's very static. And the, one, of the, one of the workhorses of an email campaign is A-B testing. And I'd like to see if I could just A-B test my hero image, which is a pretty straightforward thing to do. Um, strangely, this can be pretty difficult to do in a lot of email service providers. And we want to do this in real time and actually let the campaign figure out what's working more effectively and automatically select the winner. So there's three types of content I can add into this campaign. It could be live content off of my website or an API. It could be a set of static assets that I have somewhere. It could be images, it could be video. And finally, we build some out of the box apps, things like countdown timers in your email. Uh, a local maps widget, a weather widget, uh, and, and a lot more that we just sort of see a request for pretty frequently. So let me pull this up, and the thing we're going to add first is a, um, is a few images. And I'll import a bunch of stuff right off my desktop, and I've got those ready here. Drop them into my browser. All right, so I've got this nighttime shot here, and this is one of the assets 
we're going to use. And what I'd like to do is test that against an alternate asset. So I simply click. I've got this nightclub scene inside uh, a Vegas casino, and I've also got the uh, looks like a blackjack table. That is a blackjack table. Uh, and I can quickly toggle between those and also take a look at the fallback image. And to group those into an optimization is really simple. I simply click Optimize, mm -hmm. and I can hit Check. And as I mentioned, you can either let it pick a winner while the campaign is still running, or let the campaign run its course and help, my, help me inform my next campaign. In this case, we're trying to optimize how much money we're making on this campaign, so we'll leave that as is. Awesome. So this nighttime shot looks great, but there's going to be people opening this email during the day, so that doesn't seem like the right offer. If I'm opening this at 10 a.m., am I really going to hit the blackjack table? Me, yes, probably. <laughs> but other people, maybe not. So let's, let's let some other creative uh, be shown during the daytime. And I've got this nice poolside shot here. And I've got a pool party shot here. So I've got two more variations, and we're going to optimize between those. And so I've got a collection with an optimizer, another collection with an optimizer, and we'll apply some targeting rules between the two of those. So targeting is pretty cool. It actually lets you. Um, add criteria, and there's a number of real-time signals I can take a look at. This could be the device someone's opening this on. This could be the country someone is in, uh, the mobile carrier they're using, the time of day, the weather outside. So on any of these uh, variables, I can target the email and change up the content on the fly. So in this case, if someone opens this email between, uh, let's say, 4 p.m. and 8 a.m., I want to apply that targeting rule, and you can see that little icon pop up. So there's a time targeting rule applied to the first piece of content. All right, we'll save that. So if someone's opening this at night, they're going to see an A-B test between these two images. And if they're opening it during the day, they're going to see an A-B test between uh, the cool shots. So incredibly powerful. We've applied rules in real time. We're doing an optimization in real time. And this is something you couldn't do before inside emails. Uh, there's some more low-hanging fruit here. The hotel deals I've got, right? The second I send that email out, that hotel could be sold out. Uh, I might be changing up my inventory. The prices may change. And it's just a static thing that's already been sent. It's like a piece of direct mail. So what I'm going to do is edit this and grab a... This is a live website I've got right here with the latest prices off, um, off my website. So this could be you know, Expedia. This could be Travelocity, <coughs> any of the big... Uh, hotel chains, and I'll add a piece of live content, and we'll do a web crop off this URL. And I've got a simple cropping tool that allows me to highlight where that live content resides. And I hit save, and that easily, I've managed to pull live content straight off my website, drop it right into the email. So what was a static image like this is a live feed coming straight off my website. And even further, uh, I think I'm running out of time, but even further, I can inject CSS in real time into that and make it look completely different inside the email. So I could drop that side image, I could change the colors, I could change the, the entire feel of this, the font, in that email in real time. So that's just a couple things we've done. Uh, finally, you can contextually preview the email, and you can say, what if someone opened this email in a different location? What if they had a different device? And sort of toggle through the different options so you know exactly what your clients are going to see before that actually happens. And as a last step, it's very easy to export this and everything that we give you, single deliverable, it's the HTML for that email. Well, you'll have to take my word for it. There's HTML for that email. Uh, you can either forward that to someone in your team, you can cut and paste it, or you can... Um, send a link to that to, to someone to just send through any ESP. So pretty cool. Hope you guys find that interesting, and uh, our clients certainly do. And this is uh, some of the stuff that they say about it. So thank you, guys. Any questions? Right over here. So you mentioned the, some of the ways to make emails smarter is to... Uh... 
employee rules. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, there's other providers, I think, HubSpot, uh, FusionSoft, Quarto, that allow you, someone open email, the next one will be A, if they didn't open, send the same message, different subject line. If they open and forward it, mm -hmm. send request a demo. Uh, we'll be interested in a demo. It's, it's almost like a tree. I'm wondering if something that you do or if it, it presides on the ESP side. Yeah, so what you're talking about is uh, marketing automation, right? Uh, it's a sequence of which flow do I send you down if you've opened my email before, if you've then gone to my website and added something to a basket, do I treat you differently and put you down a different flow? That's something ESPs traditionally do. Um, rather, it's, it's more specific to B2B type of email campaigns where there's more considered <coughs> purchase and there may be seven interactions with the brand before someone buys. The majority of our clients are B2C companies and sort of the, the offer and the merchandising and the promotion tend to drive the, the impulse purchase or the, the decision to buy them. Um, so it's more trans transactional rather than sequence? Uh, it, it, transactional or sort of the traditional batch and blast email with agility sort of infused in it. So that's, um, that's, the, that's the key difference there. Uh, right back there. Do you work with any nonprofit fundraising organizations? Uh, Actually, it's funny. One of the first clients we had was uh, Donors Choose, and uh, there was a Donors Choose hackathon. And my co-founder uh, built something really interesting, sort of a single-purpose website that would show you the latest cause, make it a dynamic signature, send it out, and the cause would change once uh, it met its, its goal. And uh, he won the prize for that, and actually got to meet Stephen Colbert on the, uh, the Colbert Report. So uh, pretty interesting use case right there. Yeah, back there. So I'm curious as to what the logic was not partnering or vertically integrating with the ESP and making it a standalone product. We have, uh, so Exact Target is one ESP we've integrated with. Um, it's just sort of a, a priority issue. Uh, we're perfectly happy to have someone have this experience, the dashboard, through an ESP. It just hasn't been the thing that's been the, the huge priority yet. But uh, a seamless experience for, for our customers always a good thing and we're, we always try to move in that direction. Yeah. Can you personalize the subject lines somehow? Unfortunately, we can't. Uh, you know, we try to come up with cool things every day and there's things that we built. For example, the ability to stream live content into an email the second you open it in a sort of an animated way. Uh, but we haven't figured out a way to do the subject line um, real-time change. That would be a big deal. Yeah, but, I love uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, back here. Will these emails render correctly in an Internet Explorer engine? Um, <laughs> you know, ask me which day, which day of the week do you want to ask me that. Um, so every the nice thing about it is we've built it in, a, in such a way it's all uh, image-based. So you don't have to download any sort of plug-in if you're opening this email on Outlook, uh, within Gmail, within Apple Mail, on your iPhone, it's going to work all the same. Uh, the one exception is video, which... Um, HTML5 video is supported in some clients, but not in others. Uh, but we sort of roll back gracefully to an animated GIF experience and then even further back, depending on the email client you're opening this on. But everything else works across every email client. Uh, yes? How can you optimize the content for different mobile, uh, mobile devices? Um, so we have targeting rules you can apply. And one of the things we've also built is the ability to ingest, uh, I, I didn't actually show that step, but we can take your image or PSD and automatically build you a responsive template. So something that looks completely different on a desktop and a mobile phone uh, based on real-time logic. So that's just one of the, the shortcuts that's been a big pain point for anyone doing email marketing to do twice the work to go build a mobile template as well. Yep. You talked about in the beginning you were making 200 bucks a month targeting just individuals. Can you tell me like about you were trying to do then? Like, what was the original? Was yeah. it the same thing? Or just yeah, so we, we had one feature, which is that web crop <clears throat> thing I showed you. Okay. And um, when a small business comes in and signs up, and there's too much that they can do with it, and they've got no idea where to get started, um, it's hard to get them to sort of meaningfully do something. And in fact, I remember one of our, our first sales guys spent three months talking to a tech stars company up in Boston uh, to try to get them to move from $20 a month to $30 a month. <laughs> and we realize we don't have a business if that's what every deal is going to look like. Uh, and so I think playbooking a lot of this, coming up with common use cases, making it really easy for marketers to get up and running. Uh, and then there's a sort of crawl, walk, run philosophy we have when we engage.
engage with our clients. Do you help them get the first campaign going? Do we do. We, we do a lot of strategy consulting. We do a lot of that kind of because yeah. we just want them to be successful right. and find value. Looks really good. Way back there. Yeah, so it's not even necessarily HTML5. Um, if you've never had the pleasure of building email, uh, HTML compliant, email compliant HTML, uh, it's like something from 1999. So it's uh, very crippled, it's very limited, uh, not even HTML5. Uh, a couple new clients like the iPhone support HTML5, but it, uh, it uses a very sort of lowest common denominator type of HTML, and with the exception of video, uh, that works really well, and we're able to change up the content using a simpler approach around dynamic images. Right here. So can you give the example for the uh, dynamic content for the, the live web crop? Mm -hmm. um, it just makes the call to the to the website once, right? It's, there's no there's no refresh or auto refresh function. Um, by default, it's every time you open the email, you can see completely different content. So. Um, you open it in the morning, you open it in the afternoon, and at night, and it can be a completely different email right. to you. But if the, if the price had changed while you were looking at the email, that wouldn't be a problem. If you want it to be, um, for example, if E-Trade wanted to use this, and you open it, and you see live market prices, right. we can actually stream that in and show you your stocks ticking up and down and okay. trending uh, sure while it's right. open. Uh, you asked one already. Sorry. <laughs> Back there. <laughs> well, to that gentleman's point, he asked earlier about uh, automation. Mm -hmm. uh, he's talking and I really love the A-B testing because it's very interesting and it changes dynamically. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things is, if I want to do that, do I, do I have to have part of an ESP for your platform to have you know, to serve event-driven personalized emails or just such as that? So let's say they go to Amazon, they keep looking at buying a certain product, um, I choose one, um, you know, like a box set for you know, uh, Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it's just person like Cypher. So, like, we keep sending them emails about Cypher. I mean, like, that's my inbox is full of that. So, I'm asking, can does the personalization, the, can, can you do that dynamically in the work with ESP to do those things? Yeah, so we're ESP agnostic. Uh, if you wanted to take this content and put it through MailChimp or through Marketo or through Exact Target, it would work uh, entirely the same. And so, we've definitely done, uh, we power transactional emails for lots of companies. For example, a shipment status email that you open up. And literally shows you, you know, if your order is shipped already, or if it's en route to your your house, or something of that nature. So you could put it into a welcome series, a drip series, uh, any type of email that you're sending out. Time for one more. All right, one last one. Yes. Is there is there what's like step back end? Is there some type of open source technology like a complex event processing thing on the back end that's enabling this that wasn't around ten years ago, where you can get GPS coordinates, your time, and then kick out a specific. It's, it's scary looking. Uh, so my co-founder was at Guilt Group building uh, very scalable systems. And one of the interesting open source projects he's built is called Hummingbird and lets you um, take vast amounts of real-time data and show them um, in, in, in kind of a graphical sort of way. And if you go visit the Guilt lobby, you'll see a big display with this. But um, it's, a, it's a mix of technologies that's very unique. There's a lot of proprietary software. And the front end was actually the relatively easy part in all of this. Uh, and we're using new technologies like Ember and Rails uh, to make that very sort of interactive interface there. Cool. Well, thank, thank you. you.